Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. You know the drill. Um, anyway, um, another Marchintosh has drawn to a close. Uh, all the grease paint has been removed and all the theater kids have been put back in their cages for another year. What I wanted to kind of share with you today though is something I was working on during Marchintosh. Uh, but then I had some changes of idea about the methodology of it. And then uh, Colin made a video that is kind of related to something I was working on. And I thought that uh, rather than do a big production, I would just get the, uh, get the, uh, you know, the video out the door. So what's it about? Um, it's about the age old question of, I have an 040 IDE based Macintosh and the drive died which seems to be a pretty common occurrence these days. And so a lot of people want to know what it is that you should replace that drive with. And honestly, uh, skipping to the end, th there's no great solution uh, for those machines, but um, there is only the solution that works best for your needs. But honestly, that's kind of the truth. Um, there's lots of times where uh, something that might work well for one person uh, may not work well for somebody else or uh, somebody else wants uh, a more feature rich product that will sacrifice maybe something else somewhere else. But honestly, I'm just gonna lay it all out there on the table and let you decide. So the machine that we're gonna use as sort of the baseline test machine for this experiment is maybe the rarest performa that Apple ever produced, the 637 CD Money Edition. Now there's a ton of different versions of the 637 CD that came out. Um, there were some that were just available at like CompUSA and some that were available at uh, like uh, fries and places like that. Uh, but there is a very specific bundle that came with the 637 CD when it was sold, I think at both Circuit City and at uh, Sears. It's called the Money Magazine Edition. Oh my God, he's making a video about a computer that's got financial software. Yes, I am, Leels. Yes, I am. What's kind of unique about this machine is like a lot of performance. It's just the software that's bundled with it. Um, and But also there's like a cute little sticker on the front that they didn't put on hardly anything else. Um, I'm pretty sure that there is like a, like a Performa 550-esque kind of version. But it seems like most of the, um, the ones that have that sticker are the 637 CD. And then there's two different versions of the stickers. Oh, it's a whole rabbit hole I went down. But again, that's like a completely different video. Let's just look at the benchmarks. Okay, here we are at the test bench. We're going to go ahead and discuss all of the different things that I did. And let, but, but first of all, let's talk about methodology. Uh, what I went ahead and did is this is strictly IDE mass storage devices uh, for the um, sort of the... the you know, that Quadra 630, Performa 630 series of machines. They all use IDE. Not especially fast, but um, we're going to benchmark it out anyway. But uh, the the original drive that came with the machine basically kind of looks like the one you're seeing here. That is a... Um, the, the one here is actually... It's made by IBM, but it's Apple branded. So it um, is just strictly like an ATA33 drive. And as part of this... Um, I format the drive using the Apple Drive Setup 173, which supports IDE devices. And then I also use FWB version 3, which is uh, like the last version that works on 040s under System 7. That's my understanding. So I just figured that this would give us the best of both worlds because people uh, many times recommend those FWB drivers over the Apple drivers. And I just wanted to see if that is true uh, also with IDE devices. So in any case, again, this is kind of what the stock drive would be like. Um, not especially fast. If you look at the, uh, the bottom numbers that I have highlighted there, the um the the really the the random read write the sequential read writes nothing to write home about uh not especially great so what happens when we install uh reformat the drive and install the um 
the driver, the FWB driver, just to make sure people that don't really understand, there's a low level like software driver on the uh, device itself that actually lets the Macintosh interact with the drive for the purposes of booting. That's what that is. So here's the, um, the same drive uh, with the FWB toolkit version three. So I'm, uh, I'll have this shared out so you guys can flip through it kind of in your own time. But as you can see, the FWB driver does improve things ever so slightly. Um, it's uh, so maybe in this situation, it might be worth installing. But those are those are the specs. Um, I went ahead and I also sourced a ATA-133. If you think about it, that's kind of the end of the road for uh, these these mechanical IDE drives. Um, this one is made by Maxter. It is not in any way Apple branded. This is just a drive I had sitting around, but it's ATA 133 with um, 7200 RPM. So not a terrible drive. Um, back in the day, this is what a lot of people used in their daily drivers. So I figured that this would be a good comparison too. So you can look at the numbers. You can see the Apple drivers there. We've got um, uh, putting up much better numbers than the uh, ATA 33 drive, that's for sure. So if we install the FWB toolkit, uh, you can see that, um, you know, actually we tab back and forth. There's not a huge amount of change. Uh, some some scores go up, some scores go down, but um, it's not that bad. So what happens when we make the bridge over to solid state storage? Um, I know a lot of people will just go ahead and grab some of those. Uh, generic SD to IDE adapters. Um, I went ahead and I did a couple of different tests here with uh, different types of SD cards. Uh, this one right here is just a, like a PNY two gigabyte. Um, this would have been something that would have been maybe uh, crazy expensive uh, back when this machine, I mean, it wouldn't have even been a thing, but it would have been crazy expensive back in the day if you were trying to update this. But uh, in any case, this is uh, just a, just a generic SD card, nothing to write home about in terms of performance. I even call it kind of slow because uh, it is kind of slow. Uh, I also did a test with a um, like a faster, like I think 90 megabyte per second uh, card that was made by SanDisk. And we do get some a slightly better uh, specs, especially on those... Um, sequentials and randoms um, it is worth pointing out on this too i was only able to actually use the fwb utility to format uh, those sd cards um, anytime i tried to use the apple i would get um, an error on the machine and it is very possible that it could be this specific sd controller with this specific mac so your mileage may vary uh, and i'd certainly love to hear uh, people's feedback in the comments about that so, oh, SD cards, you're, you're really asking, you're going a bridge too far there, Ron. Well, that, that's okay, because I also tested compact flash cards. So this is a generic, and you, you see these on eBay all the time. Um, this is just a generic uh, compact flash to IDE adapter. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of compact flash cards sitting around, uh, but the one that I have is made by Verbatim. It's a two gig. I actually use it most of the time with a uh, ThinkPad laptop that uh, is like a DOS gaming laptop. So I just popped the card out, reformatted it, and decided to play around a little bit. But uh, with the Apple drivers, uh, you can see what the scores are there. Not too shabby. Um, things kind of float and maybe even go down a little bit, depending on the test uh, with the FWB drivers. And I think that that is a trend that you're gonna notice here, is those version, free driver, version three drivers of the FWB toolkit don't put up the best numbers. Um, so what about an IDE to NVMe? These are getting really popular. Um, you can get a, it's basically, it's like a little, uh, you know, two and a half inch hard drive controller um, on a card that plugs into your old machine. Uh, and then you can use modern M.2 or NVMe, uh, you know, solid state disk modules. Uh, this one right here, this is a, just a, I'm, I'm 
I'm believing it's it, it might be an M.2. I'm pretty sure it's an NVMe though, uh, but it doesn't really matter because there's only so much overhead that you can really get out of these things anyway. These the you're going to saturate the IDE bus on these machines at some point, and it doesn't matter how much you're throwing at it, you just can't get any more performance. But uh, you can look at the specs there, and yeah, this takes a hit if you try to use those FWB drivers. So my advice on a setup like this would be to definitely actually just use those Apple drivers. So, uh, what about uh, Colin? Colin made those uh, really cool IDE to uh, SD adapters. Uh, this one here, you oh, it's missing chips. No, it's actually not. Uh, he was kind enough. He made a 64 meg uh, one for me. Uh, I know that he's got 128s and 256s, and he might even have bigger ones these days. But this was kind of in the early days when he started offering this is when I bought it. And, um, and I was like, yeah, how about a 64? And he was 64 gig and he was like yeah that's fine but uh this is with the apple driver it's not not too shabby we're putting up numbers that are kind of consistent with other things again you are limited kind of by the bus of the machine and how it can you know just the nature of uh, the operating system and optimizations for uh you know reading and writing things off uh, solid state media but yeah it's um with those fwb drivers if i shift back and forth here you'll see we actually we take we take uh, some performance hits on a couple of things, but they're minuscule, minuscule, which tells me that this is a well-engineered device, that uh, it's it's given uh, the maximum amount of performance that it possibly can, regardless of uh, any kind of software limitations you got. So this was really nice device, and this was a really cool thing that Colin did for the community. Um, this is probably uh, kind of the end of uh, my testing. I also did, and this is probably uh, maybe one of the better options, uh, depending on who you are and where you are, but uh, an IDE to SATA SSD adapter, uh, this is pretty generic. I mean, you've seen those adapters online that uh, people use them for their Xboxes, people use them for their PlayStation 2s, all that type of stuff. And they work just fine in the old Macs. Uh, this is, uh, I just tried to use the most generic ones that I possibly could. I know that StarTech and other companies make very, very fancy ones. I've had limited uh, success with those, unfortunately, but the generic ones just seem to work just fine. But uh, the SSD that I'm using with this is, uh, it's made by um, OCZ, is that the name of the company? But it's uh, it's just like a 60 gig. It's it's nothing brand new, uh, but it's uh, it's a couple years old. I had it in an older machine, pulled it out. It's perfect for doing tests like this. But um, as you can check on those numbers, the Apple one, not too shabby. Uh, actually, with the FWB, you do see improvements in a few areas. So it's this might be a situation where you might play around. Honestly, though, it, it's 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 razor thin. These are razor thin differences on some of these things. So your mileage would vary to basing on based on your setup. But keep in mind, again, these are for the this these uh, benchmarks are all for the 040 era uh, IDE Max. So PowerPC Max are probably going to post completely different numbers. They've got updated controllers and such, and even like a G3 uh, blue and white or something with its IDE controller, assuming that it's a version two, would probably do even better. But again, we're just limited scope, limited scope. Be patient with me. So what did we really learn in all this? Well, I, I think we learned that Ron's got a lot of spare time, seemingly to do benchmarking on different IDE hard drives and a 30 plus year old Macintosh. But, uh, I think the real takeaway is that as long as you sort of focus on the the, the tail end of the things that I benchmarked, um, if you don't have uh, nice, fast IDE drives, at least uh, some uh, like, like Collins um, SSD uh, that just that, you know, pay to the SATA adapter with a uh, like a decent... Uh, you know, SSD, like a SATA one, um, you know, you can get some pretty good performance. I mean, well enough that you could use the machine. I mean, it's not like you're going to put any of these in and just be like, oh my gosh, I'm just waiting around. I just can't stand the performance. Oh, I, I mean, it's again, some of the differences in these were just rage, razor thin difference, but, um, so what what's in the, you know in the final analysis what's the best solution i would say the best solution is the one that fits your budget and the one that fits your uh, the availability at the time 
Um, and then whichever one is within the scope of what you feel comfortable doing with your machine. Um, I know that there are some people that are very, very enamored with the idea that you have to keep mechanical hard drives and machines for as long as possible. That's fine. I'm 100% in support of that. Uh, but I am also in full support of people that want to put in modern hard drive replacements so that way that they can get away from maybe some of the maintenance or maybe some of the just random, oh, your drive died because it's 30 years old kind of thing. Uh, I know that that is a concern for people, and that's kind of what steers them the other direction, um, especially in the SCSI world, which we'll talk about next time. So. Anyway, that's it for the moment. So thank you, everybody, for taking a few minutes out of your evening and spending it with me. And as I always say, Apple II forever.